Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're covering how to mix acoustic guitar. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. High pass and second harmonic dip. How you mix your acoustic is gonna vary depending on the sound that you're trying to achieve, so instead of giving you an exact signal chain, let's cover multiple options that you have. Let's start with EQ, which will most likely be used to attenuate the guitar up to right before it's fundamental using a high pass filter. Then if your acoustic sounds too boomy, let's find the second harmonic, create a bell and attenuate it, or we could amplify it if the guitar sounds too thin. For our demonstrations, let's listen to a double-tracked acoustic that's a little too boomy. Optional, emulate a pre. If you've recorded your acoustic with a Focusrite or PreSonus interface, that's totally fine, but it may sound a little too clean for what you're trying to achieve. If that's the case, try a pre-emulation and increase the input gain to cause some mild harmonic distortion. Depending on the one that you choose, you might also have an EQ section with which you can make the changes that we performed in the previous chapter. So let's listen to the guitars run through this preamp and with the EQ enabled. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button. It helps us bring you more videos. For percussive sound, use 1176. The compressor that you choose when you're mixing an acoustic has a huge impact on its timbre. If you want a percussive, more rock-inspired sound, try an 1176 emulation and utilize faster attack and release times. This creates a distinctly percussive sound and even some transient expansion due to the added distortion. So let's take a listen and notice how this makes the acoustic sound more in line with a rock mix. For a retro sound, use Retro STA. If you want your acoustic to sound more like it belongs on a Beatles record or other pop record from the 60s, an SDA emulation is going to work well. Its long release, along with distinct tube saturation, creates a really full and warm sound, as well as a very dynamically controlled one. I found this is a great way to create a full and warm acoustic without losing much high frequency detail. Let's take a listen to it. Only a small percentage of people that watch our videos are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. For a smooth sound, use LA-2A. An LA-2A or other optical compressor is going to smooth out the sound with its program-dependent release and higher rate of compression on high frequencies. I'll emulate it with the Pro C2 by selecting Opto, changing the attack to 10 milliseconds, the release to Auto, and using a soft knee. For an even smoother sound, use Look Ahead to ensure that the compressor captures the acoustic's transients. Let's take a listen and notice how we lose some detail, but create a pleasantly smooth sound. Transient Acoustic with Tube Saturation an alternative to compression is saturation, with which we will both compress and distort the signal. Tube saturation is gonna add a strong second-ordered harmonic, meaning our acoustic is gonna sound warm and full, but the transients will retain, if not gain some amplitude, creating a percussive sound. Now this should sound somewhat similar to the retro STA compression that we used earlier, but with distinct characteristics. Let's take a listen. Compressed Acoustic with Tape Saturation Tape saturation is going to create a second and third ordered harmonic, as well as compress the overall signal more while reducing the high frequencies of the acoustic. As a result, the acoustic is going to sound more complex and lose some of its transient and high frequency detail. This should sound a little similar to optical compression, but again, it'll have a distinct tone. 
Let's take a listen and consider how tape saturation could be used in combination with or as an alternative for typical compression. If you're enjoying the channel, join the community with the link in the description. Early Reflection, One Second Reverb. This is a general reverb sound that works really well for most acoustic guitars. Typically, it's a room or a studio emulation with about one second decay time, with most reflections being on the shorter side. Typically, the pre-delay is low and little to no modulation is added. Optionally, we can amplify some of the highs of the reverb to make the acoustic have a subtle shimmer to it. Let's take a listen to it at a higher level, but then blend it in and notice how it works both as an aggressive and a subtle effect. Midside Acoustic Bus. For convenience, I've been sending my two acoustic takes to a bus on which I perform the processing. If you also use this setup, then the bus is a great place for a midside EQ with which you can affect the mono and side images separately. For this session, I'll attenuate the side's lows, amplify the mid image's mid frequencies, and boost the highs on the side image with a shelf. Let's listen and notice how the acoustic signal becomes more focused in certain areas, but more airy and spacious in others. Stereo versus binaural panning. For this session, I've panned my two acoustic takes left and right using typical panning. This is going to cause natural stereo expansion due to the phase cancellation between the two. That said, you can also try binaural panning, which uses psychoacoustic effects to place a signal in a specific space. Typical panning will be more mono compatible, but binaural panning can be very convenient when you're trying to place an instrument in a complex mix. Let's take a listen to both and note their differences. Unique Mid-Side Trick If you have two takes or a stereo recording of your acoustic, you can use this trick. Keep the original two takes centered or unpanned, duplicate both of them, pan the duplicates hard left and right, and then change the output of the originals and duplicates to two buses. On the duplicates bus, use the free Voxingo plugin, MSED, and mute the mid. Now you have an isolated side image channel and an isolated mid image channel on which you can add whatever processing that you'd like. I like to use a transient expander on the acoustic side image since it gives it a really enjoyable dynamic sound. Let's take a listen. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.